Hey, math people. You ever miss the days of playing with your imaginary best friend? No, really? No? Well, mathematicians of the 17th century really did. They said, yeah, I keep running into these square roots of negatives, and I also miss my imaginary best friend, so hey, how about we merge those together and call them the imaginary unit? And thus, imaginary numbers were born. At least I'd like to think that was the case. Now, nah, so the reality is they kept running into square roots of negatives, like, time and time again. And any time they ran into it, they kept snapping their fingers and saying, oh darn, can't do that one, and they moved on. So after seeing square roots of negatives for the kajillionth time in a row, they realized, well, maybe this is something that has a little bit of value to it. And that was how imaginary numbers were born. Anyways, there's a fun property to talk about, and that property is powers of i. Okay, starting with i to the first, obviously that's just i. Also, keep in the back of your mind the fact that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So when we play around with i squared, uh, well, the square root of negative 1 squared, square root and square cancel, uh, we just have negative 1. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. i cubed, i to the third. Well, then, if you break it apart using its exponents, we know that 1 plus 2 is 3. Um, so that's just i times i squared. Um, and I know that i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times i is negative i. Let's look at i to the fourth. i to the fourth, okay, we can break that into i squared and i squared. If we have i squared times i squared, we know i squared is negative 1. And we know the other i squared is negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1, that's just 1 i to the fifth is next, and we're going somewhere with this, obviously. Um, I know i to the fifth is just i to the fourth times i. Well, I just established that i to the fourth is one, and one times i is just i. Now, now we're back to i. I'm to make up some sort of conjecture as to what i to the sixth might be. Then i to the seventh, and i to the eighth, and i to the ninth, and i to the tenth, and well, so on. For the big reveal, it's a cycle, right? So if we have i to the first, that's just i. i to the second is negative one i to the third is negative i, i to the fourth is 1, and then once we get back to i to the fifth, we're back around to i again, and that just kind of goes in a circle. So maybe take a stab at what i to the 999th might be. You can also just guess, you got a 1 and 4 shot. So this ends up being negative i, and the next one, well, just follows that pattern. We know that 1 is to follow. So the rule is essentially if you take the power of i and divide it by 4, and it works, you get a nice pretty integer after that division. Uh, then 1 will be your answer. If you have a remainder of 1, then i will be your answer. If you have a remainder of 2, it's negative 1. 3 is negative i, and well, uh, once you have a remainder of 4, it's not really a remainder because 4 goes into 4, and you're back at 1. So why do we end up talking about patterns like this? So math is quantitative truth, and if you want to know the truth, you want to know the whole truth and nothing but it. So if you can explore it, then why not? When we look into the cosmos, for example, we try to look at, well, everything. If it's out there, we want to see it. And it's the same thing with math. So this is out there, and it's kind of a fun idea to know. And that is all I have for you math people. So I'm going to continue to play around with my imaginary friend I here, and I hope you do the same. See you in the next video.